Uh, hey what is up everyone welcome to yrr help and in this video i'm going to show you how to integrate a spring plugin uh, into your eclipse and i'm going to show you what are all the extra benefits of integrating that plugin all right the first thing you have to go to your uh, marketplace just click on help and go to your eclipse marketplace and uh, try to look for something like a uh, spring tool all right now what you're looking is uh, spring tools 4 so this is the latest version available at this uh, at this point and if you have any other version like 5 or 6 at the time when you're viewing this video uh, you can install that you know click on install button here now i think i've already installed here and uh, so after installing and after uh, rebooting your eclipse so you'll get your new uh, project setup so you have to go to a new and you can click on other and uh, search for something like spring all right now you have uh, two new options to, to create a project the first one is the kind of uh, getting started guide if you are interested you can uh, you know, select any of the projects available and you can download and you, you can use it for a reference and in case if you are starting a project you can just click on a uh, spring starter project and it will try to connect you to you know, start.spring.io and uh, if you're wondering what is this uh, so this is nothing but the spring initializer project which we used to do before you know this is where we use it to download all the dependencies and set up our project now the entire uh, web uh, web page uh, you can uh, get it from here so uh, the same thing you can select your uh, uh, you know dependency manager and the type of package and java version and etc and etc and once you are uh, happy with that you can click on next and this is where you pull your dependencies for spring projects and you can see uh, you can see all the available uh, categories you can say let's say sql you can say spring data jpa and if you're developing web applications you can say spring web or something like that now uh, once you are happy with that you can click on next and it will show something and click on finish so after clicking uh, finish, uh, you will have uh, entire project set up here. And now you don't have to worry about going to web page and downloading and, and integrating into Eclipse. So that we don't want that or we don't need that. All right, now uh, let's say you have an existing project and you want to uh, modify your uh, Maven dependencies. What you can do is that you can uh, just right click and you can say spring and you can say edit starters. Uh, just wait for some time all right once the page is loaded now you can modify your uh, uh, plugin sorry you can modify your dependencies now previously i had h2 spring dev tools or something like that now if i want i can uh, integrate uh, some other plugin as well so that's uh, so that's pretty much about creating a project now uh, the second thing is that um, you can see a new icon here uh, which is in a kind of pentagon shape that's a spring icon now you can uh, click on that boot dashboard and what you're seeing right here is the available project in your workspace uh, especially available as spring boot projects in your eclipse now what you can do is that you can straight away you start your spring projects from here and if you have if you're developing microservices and if you have multiple uh, uh, spring boot projects you can uh, just right click on a project and you can say restart or re-debug and uh, you can say open in browser or something like that so that's one uh, good future with this plugin and another future is that and uh, if you go to your application properties uh, you should notice a new icon uh, which is kind of like a leaf icon and if you're not seeing that leaf icon you can just uh, click on open with and you should be able to see this uh, generic editor for spring properties now uh, what it does is that it kind of try to auto populate your uh, properties let's say when i when i try to add uh, spring data source properties i can say spring data source so it kind of try to suggest all the available properties for you and it will even display the documentation for the respective property and you can just double click and you can enter the value so that's good thing about uh, this plugin and in case uh, if you try to enter an uh, invalid property uh, it will highlight immediately in that yellow color uh, line under that and what it's trying to say is that it's saying it's an unknown property so that's one good thing so that's uh, pretty much about this plugin and if you like this video 
uh, don't forget to subscribe us and stay tuned